Forewarning, this video contains footage from two very R-rated films. If you've got a weak constitution and you've never seen either The Thing films, well, keep your toilet seat on standby. You've been warned. Also, spoilers. That should go without saying. John Carpenter's The Thing is arguably one of the best horror movies ever put to screen, and even vies for the top spot of a number of different science fiction film lists as well, sitting comfortably upon a glowing reputation alongside its spiritual cousin, Ridley Scott's Alien. It stands currently as my favorite horror film of all time, and is what I consider the pinnacle of John Carpenter's directing ability. I mean, it's a film that has everything. Spooky scares, dynamic and logical character relations, an intriguing mystery plot, a choking atmosphere of paranoia and deceit, the absolute greatest feats of disgusting practical effects, and blistering hot romantic tension. Uh, <clears throat> that, um, that last one might not be quite on point. Regardless, I don't think it's much exaggeration to say it's a cornerstone icon of both horror and science fiction and has become deservedly revered over the years. Unfortunately, as with most cult films that eventually receive their due in the modern era, it received a remake. Sort of. You see, producers Mark Abram and Eric Newman, upon deciding to go forward with the project, declared that trying to one-up the original would have been akin to putting a mustache on the Mona Lisa. So they opted for a prequel instead of a remake. Coincidentally, around the same time, director Massis Van Heigenberg... Okay, I'm going to be honest, my tongue is trying to commit suicide because of this name. I'm just going to call him Maddie. You see, at this time, our good director Matty was actually on the lookout for some kind of project in the works for the Thing or Alien franchises. So when the three crossed paths, the idea was finally set into motion. The story would focus on the events of the Norwegian camp that was seen only for a short period of time in the original film, a camp that suffered seemingly the same fate as the American camp does shortly thereafter. When I first heard the news, I was ecstatic. I mean, for a prequel concept, this was a pretty damn good one, getting to see how the whole encampment fell apart, how all the crazy bits wound up the way they did, and a promised return to practical effects, only using CGI to smooth over cracks in the facades. I was hyped! And then the film came out, and it left a lot to be desired. Mary Elizabeth Winstead did a great job in her role, I thought, and most of the cast was at the very minimum serviceable, but the film failed to capture the camaraderie and paranoia that made the original so nail-biting. While I don't have much issue with the repeated plot points, I mean, come on guys, humans have only so many reactions to alien invasions, some repetition is bound to happen. There was a lack of familiarity between cast members, the film had scenes outside of Antarctica that drastically reduced the sense of isolation, and one or two niggling inconsistencies between the original and itself, such as how the alien space was dug out, really ended up dragging it down. Of course, the biggest and most infamous flaw is how the touch-up CGI was turned into a slather that made every single effect dip into the uncanny valley in the worst possible way. Now, why this happened, I've honestly never been able to get a straight answer. Some say the practical effects didn't look good enough when being shot, others say the producers wanted to modernize, maybe it's both, maybe it's neither. Regardless, the practical effects got more than overshadowed by shoddy CG work, and the history will remember this film for what it could have been and not for what it ultimately wound up being. So we're probably about that that point where you're asking, McNeil, you You've just spent the better part of the last two minutes ripping into this movie, what the hell are you defending exactly? Good question, internet audience strawman, and allow me to give you an answer. I'm defending the thing itself. You see, while trolling the internet, on almost every single critique I've seen, people bitch about the thing not behaving like the thing from John Carpenter's original The Thing. Try saying that five times fast. And while I could normally ignore this as a nitpick, this almost inevitably becomes the reason people ended up hating this movie. It became too jump scare heavy. It's all about gross up factor. It lost its subtlety. Yeah, the thing isn't very subtle in this film. Do you want to know why? This film came before the last film. It might be weird to you guys, but the thing has a fucking character arc. I mean, legitimately, I don't think this is something that most people think about because it rarely has reason to crop up. Most horror movie antagonists are either mindless or static, with most sentient ones already at the end of their development when they tip over the edge into straight-up homicidal mania. But the thing? I mean, picture this. You're traveling through space. The ship you're on crashes into a frozen wasteland and with your last vestiges of strength, you crawl out of the ship and end up freezing. Eventually, you're broken out of the ice by a bunch of aliens that you've never seen before, ones that have domesticated other aliens so you're initially confused as to who is in charge on this planet. In a gamble to survive, you split into multiple parts, infecting as many people as possible as quickly as possible and slowly learning that hiding in plain sight is the most preferable option once you learn how these aliens operate. When every other copy of you ends up dying, you take the role of one of the subservient quadrupedal aliens because they can move faster and take off into the snow, hoping to find some new way to survive or maybe freeze again and wait for another opportunity to escape. 
You wander upon another base of aliens, ones that know nothing of your true nature, and as luck would have it, end up killing the last dregs of the previous camp because of a misunderstanding. Knowing the fate of your last attempts to survive, you decide to play the slow game and lay low, only for your cover to keep getting blown by the quadrupedal alien's instincts and the bipedal alien's ingenuity. It's a perfect throughline that depicts the thing as more of a creature than some kind of force of nature. Now as to its motivations, I don't know them. I only said survival in that description up there because it's the most rational, but it could very well be that the thing is a malevolent alien, or maybe a well-meaning one that just doesn't understand humanity. That's kind of the beauty of this interpretation. It leaves the mystery of the thing intact while also giving us a more well-defined and interesting character. Hell, it also does a good job keeping the ending of the original film ambiguous because it can be pretty easily argued that the thing learned to put jewelry and fillings back in after assimilation. So yes, it's still very much possible Childs is the thing. It's just a shame that the rest of the film doesn't quite hold up to this intriguing premise. If I had to point to one issue that really held this film down, aside from the occasional horrible CGI effects, it would be the character bloat. This film did not need a 16-person cast, especially especially since the original maintained excellence with four less. There should have been more of a focus in defining the characters early on, slowly easing into the tension of the film. Don't start with Kate in America, start with her arriving at the base. Show her and the other Americans running into communication problems with the Norwegians. Have the language barrier be more significant than just one scene. Have it pervade the entire film, and don't give anyone subtitles to amp up the anxiety for English-speaking audiences. This film really could have been great. Just as great as every single one of my patrons who help keep this channel running, especially new members Jay York, Hector Lashore, and Molly Rhymemaster. Welcome to the fold, guys. Hope you enjoy this day. Remember, I couldn't do this without you guys, and every patron of $1 or more gets access to the Team Frostbite Discord server where Fat Man Tom and I frequently interact with our most vocal fans. So if you think this is a terrible movie and I shouldn't be sitting here defending it, please feel free to go there and yell at me about it. Still, even with the glaring flaws, I think this perspective change, be it intentional or accidental on the director's part, ends up being a net positive to the franchise, unlike the video game that boiled the series down to a dime a dozen Resident Evil knockoff. Oh shit. There was a video game. Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding! <laughs> <laughs>